Thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. Um, the last time I was here, I had a blast talking to you guys. Um, you were one of the most engaged audiences that I've had the pleasure of speaking in front of about Send Export. Um, so I had a lot of fun. That made it a lot of fun for me as a presenter. And I'm thrilled to be back. Um, so thank you guys again for hosting this exhibition. I should say thank you to ALA and Nextbook, who originally asked us about organizing this show in the first place and traveling it around the country to 35 libraries. Um, it's even headed to Canada, I understand, uh, up in Montreal and things like that. Um, and it's been extremely fun, and you guys have been a really warm and welcoming uh, audience here. You've worked really hard to make this happen and all the programs around it. So thank you again, uh, Kim and Joy and Linda and Paul. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be doing, yeah, yeah, here, here. I thought, man, thank you to the um, Peanut Gallery. You guys will keep me straight with this whole presentation. Um, they're going to give me their best dirty faces as the show goes along, so that'll keep me in line. Um, I've got a lot of um, pictures I want to show you of Maurice Sendak's work. A um, little bit different than some of the pictures that I showed you the last time I was here, and I want to take a slightly different tack. The last time I was here, I talked to you a lot about Sendak's upbringing and the sort of sense that he grew up in, in, in sort of two worlds, in the shtetl, Jewish, Eastern European world of his parents that they brought him up in, and in his own sort of uh, golden age, 1930s, um, Brooklyn neighborhood. And both of those worlds had a huge impact on all of his work, on the nearly 100 picture books that he's done. Um, including, and I'm glad you brought it up too, Joy, his, his recent book, Bumble Artie, which uh, came out just about a month ago. A decidedly unkosher book. It's all about pigs and this <laughs> ridiculous party that they throw. Um, and a uh, really funny book. Um, so I'm going to be sort of DJing that again between uh, some slides of his artwork and a uh, presentation of some interviews with Sendak that we did in 2007 and 2008. So please bear with some of the program switching as I go through, the pro, uh, through this talk, and I'll be going between the interviews and some of the images. Um, in, in this talk, I wanted to tell you, since I talked a lot about what he creates and where it comes from and what some of those creations were, like the wild thing, I want to tell you a little bit more about why he creates, what some of his motivations are for being an illustrator and what illustration means to him. So that sort of craft focus is, is what I'm going to talk to you about today. And this group is, is small enough that um, we can probably keep this pretty informal. Um, last time, I think I had you save your, your, your questions until the end. But if you've got questions in between, I'm more than happy to take them as they go along if I'm being unclear, if you need sound turns out, and things like that. So uh, please raise your hands and, and let me know, and I'll do my best to take them in order. Um, with that said, um, as Joy mentioned, I work at the uh, Rosenbach Museum and Library in Philadelphia. This is the front of the building, um, which was founded in 1954. It's uh, based on the collection of two brothers who lived in Philadelphia, Dr. Abraham Rosenbach and his brother Philip. And I told you a little bit more about the history last time I was here, um, and I'll just sort of briefly recap that. Um, the brothers collected a number of things, but Dr. Abraham Rosenbach's true passion was rare books and manuscripts, and particularly Americana. Um, one of the people that he particularly amassed a really interesting collection of was Herman Melville. And one of the pieces at the Rosenbach Museum, it's actually the first piece you see when you walk in the front doors, is this bookcase here, which belonged to Herman Melville, who, if you're not uh, familiar with the name, was the author of Moby Dick, probably most famously. He also happens to be Sendak's favorite author. Um, and I don't just mean favorite author, I mean complete obsession with Herman Melville. Um, he's named his dog Herman. Um, he's named one of his most famous characters. If you've ever read the book Pierre, about a little boy in a blue suit whose only words throughout the whole book are, I don't care. Um, that boy is based on a uh, Melville novel of the same title. It was the no novel that Melville wrote after he wrote Moby Dick. He wrote Pierre. So Melville plays a huge role in Sendak's life. This is Sendak's portrait of his hero for a two-volume biography that he put out in the mid-90s. Um, and there's a clip I want to play about this bookcase that I was holding back last time that I, that I was here because it's a funny um, experience, I think, to hear about an author having, um, uh, having thoughts about the things that are in museums and libraries. And it's fun to hear what Maureen Sendak thinks about books and thinks about 
about that are in here. So I wanted to play that clip just briefly. This is the DVD that I'm going to be playing some, some pieces from.